My name's Matt. This is my brother, Nick. We've been carrying tag team wrestling solely on our backs for the past decade and a half. We're the best tag team in AEW. We're the Young Bucks. Hello everyone and welcome to our universe. The Cave-In Universe. Oh yes, we are your host. I am Vinny. And I'm Kaylin. You can find us at The Cave-In Universe on social media, YouTube, and at TheCaveInUniverse.com. And don't forget, you can email us at TheCaveInUniverse at gmail.com. Oh yes, y'all ready for Bisque? <laughs> yeah, ready for Bisque. We were just watching Solar Opposites. Again. Yeah, we're catching up on that. Yeah, so. it's pretty good. Yeah, One thing I a- noticed, and don't judge me for saying this, because it doesn't. I don't have to be like... You know, super smart or super dumb or anything. But one thing I noticed about Solar Opposites, and don't judge me for it, is that it's easier, more easier to understand than it is Rick and Morty, if that makes sense. Really? I feel like you Rick and Morty so? is just a little technical, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, I, yeah, I can, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Rick and Morty, yeah, they try to um, explain things so much. But no, I think Solar Opposites does it too, yeah. but in a more subtle type of way. Yeah, maybe that's it. Well, because yeah. you're looking at it from a uh, Oh, wow. I sounded like far away right there. You're looking at it from a perspective of where like, because like when you look at it from a human perspective, you're like, you think like, okay, Rick's a genius. So you're trying to look at it from perspective of like, how does this guy figure it out? Mm -hmm. Figure out how to do this and figure out how to explain this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. On Solar Opposites, you're just like, oh, it's an alien. So it's like you automatically assume that it's going to know how to do mind control and all this other shit. Um, they, from that's what, what we've seen, though, they can do some pretty cool shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's freaking, yeah, it's all that's awesome show. Yeah. I mean, it just, I like the fact that it's just out there, you know, yeah. just it, it doesn't like because Rick and Morty they do have to tone it down a bit, uh, because it is like an old man and a young kid, whereas two aliens they can just, you know, yeah, go all out with it, like yeah, having. Yeah. T- shrinking people down into tiny humans and keeping them like in an ant farm. Yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Funny. Um, I don't know how. Again, another episode testing how this is gonna come out. Uh, yeah. Last episode, uh, I kind of sound like shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So, um, got a pop filter today. So yeah. hopefully that filters out a lot of the my puss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my puss. Uh, the phone is on silent today, so yeah. no, no, no calls. phone calls. Uh, <laughs> you know, if anyone calls, you know, maybe they'll be on a guest as a guest on this podcast soon one day. So then you'll, you'll hear them then. Yeah, maybe. Um, but today is going to be one for those wrestling fans. Um, yeah. So, yes. So one of the things we cover on this podcast is wrestling. Um, if you aren't or if you just really just like get hate seeing any wrestling podcast or thing on your on your podcast feed uh just let us know dm us on social media yeah or email us um who knows we may one day do a separate wrestling podcast but for now we're throwing it all out on the yeah. on the table this is, it this is what now. we got um so we hope you enjoy thank you for listening if you're a wrestling fan again like the office episode we have a special love for you yeah um <laughs> if you're not a wrestling fan i mean hopefully you can just uh you know find this interesting or hopefully you stick yeah. around um maybe you can check it out after this maybe this one will make you want to check out yeah. uh wrestling never uh, know yeah exactly well never know we have the wwe backlash pay-per-view um this sunday or tomorrow mm-hmm. but to be honest i mean i really haven't been watching a lot of wwe i mean i really haven't yeah it's just you know we it's, still follow the highlights and stuff like on social media yeah, exactly yeah we still i still like see what happens and what's going on but it's just I mean, I hate to compare AEW and WWE. I mean, honestly, it's like comparing The Office and Space Force um, in that sense. Yeah. It's two totally different shows. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's just like after a while, what WWE is doing is just like I said, I hate mm-hmm. to compare them. But um, I just feel like I'm more invested in AEW at this point because they look at things from a way different perspective. Oh, and yeah. it's a real perspective. Um, like we'll bring it up later when I show you the Joey Janela thing. It's like WWE would never do 
yeah. something like that, like in a bar, you know, where someone is like, you know, like a beat down wrestler. He feels like he's a failure. So he's like in a bar drinking yeah. something about that whole vignette was awesome. Uh, like I said, we'll get into that. But it's like things like that WWE would never do. So it's like at, at one point you have to go brown. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, WWE is PG and AEW is like TV 14. So it's like I said, it's two yeah. different shows. So yeah. if you enjoy WWE, you can enjoy it. But right now I'm enjoying W. So um, before we get into the Nothing actual backlash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we get into the uh, backlash predictions, uh, mainly let's talk about what's going on in AEW. Um, yeah. So, Kaylin, I know this is going to be an episode <laughs> where I'm talking a lot, but you do have a perspective, too, because you, yeah. you still do catch a little bit of I what's do, going yeah. on in AEW. And uh, I'm, you follow a lot of th on things on, media, on social yeah. media, so you see highlights yeah. and stuff like that. So um, what, do you, what do you think so far? Uh, so far, um, I don't know, I guess pretty good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That's a great, yeah, like I don't really watch it live like you. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, well, um, let's see. Let's get started here. Well, so to uh, start the AEW talk, I mean, I guess basically it's just reviewing the last episode of Dynamite because that would lead us to everything that we need to know today. Yeah. Um, first of all, Dynamite started with Jericho on commentary. I mean, I just think Jericho's Honestly, going on Honestly, he's commentary. hilarious. Yes, that's that's the point. He's hilarious. Um, you got other people, I mean, other podcasts out there that yeah. they complain with Jericho being on commentary. And it's like, I just feel like, I don't know, whatever reason you may have that he's annoying, he's taking away from the match. And it's like, first of all, he he's on there. And yes, he's meant to be annoying. He's meant to be entertaining. <laughs> he's meant to make you laugh. But yeah, he could be distracting from the match or the wrestlers. But at the same time, he does everything he can to put over everyone is in the match. Yeah. And a wrestling term put yeah. over is like, you know, make them look good. Mm -hmm. So he does whatever he can to be like, look at this guy, he's a beast, or he's massive, this guy's awesome. And then yeah, even when he like needs him. to talk crap about the people that people love, he does it in a way that makes you want to like the person. Yeah. So he's doing his job. I just feel like those people out there that say things like that, like, oh, you know, I mean, what, you really hate it that bad? You know I what know, I mean? It's right. like, I feel like those people just make, or those are the, <laughs> the people that make a bad name for wrestling fans. Cause yeah. They just take everything way too seriously. And it's like, it's entertainment. He's entertaining. Um, so right off the bat, I mean, I think he was just gold on, on, on commentary. Like I said, he makes me laugh throughout the whole match. <laughs> I mean, His but comments, yeah, like, but then, yeah, but then I'm also invested in the match, you know? Yeah, true. I guess some people are singular brained where they, uh, can't do two things at once. I can, I can yeah. watch the match and listen to Jericho's commentary <laughs> and put it in two yeah. separate sections of my brain. But, yeah. uh, um, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's awesome. Hell yeah. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I sound like I'm super far away from the mic. I don't think so. I think you sound good. All right, let me just adjust this. <laughs> so I think, first of all, you start off with FTR versus Witcher and Blade. I think Witcher and Blade are just awesome. Been a big fan of those guys. The, the actual, uh, I don't know if you saw them. They're like the two big guys. The guy comes out with like a gimp mask, like a black leather mask mm -hmm. with a zipper. Yeah. Uh, and then the other guy's like this big, like, like I don't know. How do you say? Like, I don't know, big corn-fed, older biker-looking dude. Oh, and okay. he comes That's out with a, a good, monocle. Yeah, yeah, he comes out with a monocle. Yeah, um, they're just freaking badass. And the, but the actual guy with the monocle, he's a bass. He's a bassist in like a popular band. Oh really? Uh, what was the band called? Dang it! <laughs> I think it's kind of like Every Time I Die or something like that. Oh. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty cool. Actually, I've been meaning to check out that band. So um, they're always cool. So they they uh, went off against FTR. And I mean, are you familiar with FTR? I think so. Yeah. Well, they were uh, the revival in WWE, and they're known for. Oh, like, okay. I think. The, yeah, they sound more familiar. Yeah, yeah. These guys are known for like being like, like I mean, that's what they're saying. Like no flips, just fist. Yeah, and is they that always what that make, means? Yeah, they yeah. always make fun of the fact that like wrestlers. That's why like they have a thing with the young buck because yeah. they make fun of wrestlers that do flips and super kicks and things, and they're just like they're like the old school type wrestling because like oh, okay. the old school. I guess you can say like Memphis. Uh, what other territory would I mean? I guess you could say every territory. Just the old school style of wrestling was like Bruiser. Yeah. So they're they're known for that, like just like old school style of wrestling. Yeah. Wow, well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess I really didn't have that much of an understanding. So I'm glad you explained. Right. Yeah. yeah. I see how like it's like yeah. different styles. It's like so many layers, and that's why I think wrestling is just like its own fandom because yeah. there's so many layers to it. Like there would be something like a Star Wars or Star Trek or Dungeons and Dragons or Battlestar any, Galactica. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's why it's like a a legit fandom um but yeah so they were the revival and then even in WWE, they were known for like not liking it there and they because they were popular like fans love them 
Um, mm-hmm. But they were known for kind of getting screwed over in WWE and WWE trying to re-sign them, trying to give them more money or trying to give them sweet deals, like wow. giving them the titles to stick stick around. Yeah. Uh, one time in the wrest in a wrestling match, they showed they like cut to a picture in picture and they did like an interview. Yeah. While the revival were having a match. And they got so pissed off when they found out they literally were still in their wrestling gear in their trunks. And they went to Vince and asked for their release. Wow. Yeah, that's how pissed off. And they ended up sticking around. And well, finally, they got a release. And uh, even when they were in WWE, when they were kind of like trying to get released, yeah. they would do uh, like the, the Young Bucks and Cody the Elite. They had this like inside joke, FTR, which stood for Fuck the Revival. Wow. So that's why pretty much in AW now they're called FTR. Yeah. But it, it could be many other things. They said it was a for the revival, um, you know, wow. forever the revival. Well, you know, they obviously can't use fuck the revival in AEW now. Yeah. So now it's uh, basically uh, fuck the rest or there's a name for it. Oh, just f- or forget the rest or something like forget, that. But yeah. no, I think there was another one, that, another oh. thing they used it for. But anyway, so uh, I think that's pretty cool. They go by FTR because they can call it what they want to call it. But Anything, everyone yeah. knows it just it stands yeah. for fuck the revival. Wow. Um, yeah, so let's see. And then, of course, before we started the episode, that badass promo that you saw on, with the Young Bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. They're with, cool. They're yeah, cool. Yeah, so I kind of, like, I mean, another thing, I hate to compare it, but I kind of like that AEW is kind of meta in a way. Like, they kind of break the stereotype that wrestling is fake because yeah. they kind of, in a way, acknowledge that you're, this is for, like, a show mm-hmm. and we're going to put on a show for you, not that. But then, see, that's another thing, too, because then they have a way of making everything real. They make it real by showing you what's going on, you know, in the yeah. backstage or, or showing you the insights, yeah. like like uh, being the elite, the Young Bucks YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, they show you kind of like behind the scenes. Same with VAR, too. They kind of show you behind the scenes, but even though be, they show you behind the scenes, they still keep, like, certain things from the storyline in a way that makes you want to be interested yeah. in. You know, for example, like if Sammy Guevara so... You know, on, someone's on his vlog he doesn't like, they're going to act like they don't like each other. So they kind of keep it interesting yeah. um, in that way. What was I talking about? The Young Bucks. What was my main point? Yeah, so they make it interesting um, in that way. So, uh, <laughs> I want. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just had a brain fart. Oh, yeah, literally. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, moving on. What what's what's going on with the Nightmare Family? Okay, so the Nightmare Family is like mm. Cody Rhodes' team. It was original. Uh, okay, so it was originally Cody Rhodes and DDP and Brandy and Cody's dog. Well, Cody's dog was out because the whole fireworks situation, and then oh, yeah. you had DDP just di- up and disappeared. So um, yeah, they have Dustin Rhodes, his brother, QT Marshall, which they never really explained who he is or why he's there maybe i missed it uh, but now they have this gimmick where qt marshall is going through some kind of like midlife crisis and like he got hair plugs and the bunny <laughs> or ally is her name she used to be with the butcher and the blade and w- it was kind of badass because she came out with the bunny mask and it was the butcher the blade and the bunny well now she's just ally again and she's with qt marshall and i'm like just suddenly yeah and it's like what, what what's co- why? first of all you never explained who this guy was yeah. second of all you never explained why Ali was with the butch and the blade and third of all why is she with him now like oh. you gotta I mean what? look I mean this is AW's gonna have problems obviously like everything else there's some badass things that go on WWE just they're gonna have problems yeah Um. this is one of those things I don't like and I feel like you know, it's going to suck when it fails because I like Dustin, I like Cody, and I like the idea of the Nightmare family. Yeah. But Brandy tried to do her own thing, the Nightmare Collective, uh, with, like, her own, like, women's, like, div- like stable, you know, with Awesome Kong. Yeah. Uh, where she would collect the people's hair. Well, that was kind of failing anyway. People weren't getting behind that. And then Awesome Kong left to go film Glow for Netflix because she's, yeah. she's on that show Glow. And oh. that kind of just failed. So I feel like they got to, I don't know, they got to do something with this. I didn't so. know that about that girl. What? Awesome Kong? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's on Glow. I've never seen Glow. You should watch it. Me either. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Me either. We'll check it out. Let's. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't know if it's on the second or third season. I feel like this boom mic, or not this boom mic, this uh, pop filter is making me too far away from the mic. But then I feel like if I don't have it, then you hear my... 
<laughs> you know, I don't know. We'll see how this fucking episode turns out. Let's see. I mean, what what's what's more to say about AEW? I mean, the women's division is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think it's barely finding its footing, right? Yeah. Um, like, God, man, I hate to compare, and I I even say I know, right? don't compare <laughs> AEW and WWE, but I guess at some point you have to. Yeah. You definitely. have to just not to put WWE down, but you have to just to explain perspective to people yeah. that don't know AEW. Yeah. I think that's why you have to compare the two. I wouldn't compare the two to try to put one over the other. I mean, they're both, like I said, if you try to do it that way, they're both going to be separate. Um, but I feel like you have to for perspective. Yeah. Like in AEW, the women are just not afraid to beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. You know? Um, Much respect. Yeah, exactly. But that could be why, yes, there's a lot of mess ups, but, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I feel like mess ups make it real too, to an extent, once you get too yeah. many mess ups and you know, or certain mess ups, um, depends on how the person sells it. But sometimes you have uh, some people that know how to sell mess up where they don't try to just like recover and they sell it like as if they just got hurt or something. Those yeah. are the best type. Yeah, that makes it seem real because that makes you like, oh shit, they fucked up. Not like, ha, ah, they fucked up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's just like I said, perspective. Yeah. Um, Britt Baker, I don't like. Oh my god. <laughs> She's actually, uh, I don't know if they're engaged or they're just together. She's with Adam Cole, who's the NXT champion. Which, say NXT. I'm yeah. I remember. Yeah, which you can, a lot of people, you know, well, technically NXT and AEW are like a rivalry just because they come on the same night. But yeah. uh, I, I don't, again, two, kind of two, same, same, more same, but different shows. Um, but I don't like the fact that like NXT is just like in a small studio in Florida, that full Sail university. Yeah. I just don't like that setup. I don't know. Yeah. You can just tell when that room is small, mm-hmm. you know, in the, yeah. in the full cell. So, yeah. and it's like the, and now I think what really took me out of it is cause at first I didn't know cause they always had an audience and they never showed like the background of, of the full cell studio, but I didn't know it's so small that literally like the gym is like, right, like through a door, Yeah. you know? And it's just like, so it's, wow. I don't know. It just kind of takes me out of it. But yeah. a lot of people love NXT. I, mean, I like a lot of things about NXT, yeah. but um, yeah. Um, so right now they got uh, like the Orange Cassidy thing. Do you like Orange Cassidy? He's okay. Um, he's just like too much of an airhead. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's his thing. And that's why I people know, love yeah. him. Because I mean, as a wrestling fan, since I was what, you know, like five years old. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> and he makes it work. It's so awesome. And it's like, it's, it's funny. And I, I don't think it would have worked five years ago. I don't think it would have worked ten years ago. I think it works now because it's like it defines literally a, a generation. Yeah. He, he like he, like we know a lot of people like that. Yes. You know. Yes. 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 <laughs> they just don't care and it's just lazy and things like that. He just does it. He's just it's awesome. Yeah. You know, like I loved whenever uh, he got announced for the casino battle royal match. They announced it on Twitter. Uh-huh. AW. They put like, oh, Orange Cassidy's gonna be in the casino battle royal. And he literally retweeted it and just put, I don't know what this is. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> oh, awesome. It's all a part of the act, but it, it fits, yeah. it fits his, if it's him. Yeah, he plays that character. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah, you got to look at it from that perspective. If AEW was a movie yeah. and he played, you know, the character just like he does on TV, it'd be awesome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Brian Cage, that freaking jacked, roided up motherfucker. Um, <laughs> he's that. Hey, I like that I dude mean, though. He's true. he's money, and I've always been a fan of Taz. Um, yeah. You know, and and I like that they have Brian Cage paired up with them. A lot yeah. of people are like, "Ooh, why do you need this? Why do you need all these legends compared up compared up with these people?" Because it's badass. Yeah, Brian Cage is badass. But if you if you just had like that that segment where he attacked Moxley in the car, or he attacks Mo- Moxley in the parking lot. If you just had that, it would just be another beatdown. Yeah. But the fact that you have Taz and then Taz is kind of like, you can tell Taz is like kind of like the, uh, I don't want to say like controlling of yeah. him, but Taz is like the person that tells him when to stop to look out for his for his best interest. Yeah. Because there was a there was a part when uh, Brian Cage was going to powerbomb Moxley onto a car in the parking lot, mm-hmm. and Taz told him, Taz was like, no, stop. He's like, we, we send a message, like we're good. Yeah. And then... He still ended up picking up Moxley and throwing him on the car on the glass. Yeah. And the whole time Taz was like, no, no, no. And then when he did it, Taz was like pushing him. So oh, it's wow. like you can tell the story, what the storyline is going to be or what the characters is going to be yeah. is that Brian Cage is going to be. I mean, obviously, he's this giant roided out dude. He is somewhat of a loose cannon and can't yeah. control himself. And Taz has to be there to kind of tell him to stop. Wow. But even then, 
when Taz tells him to stop, sometimes he doesn't want to stop. Sure. So it kind of plays like, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I hate to compare it. But this is this is <laughs> WWE, this is or uh, this is AEW's Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, and I think with with the right, if they do it for long enough and the right way, yeah. it's gonna be better. It's, yeah. it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I said, perspective. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so let's move on. Um. Go ahead and uh move on to WWE now. I yeah, mean. I know, right? <laughs> We've just been bashing them and comparing them. And I mean, I don't mean to, but it's just like there's a... The proof is in the pudding, you know? Yeah. Like the saying goes. <laughs> I mean, I naturally don't have a bias against yeah. WWE. I grew up watching WWE my whole life. Mm-hmm. It's just... So you can never really say that you don't like it? I, I can never really say yeah. I don't like it, no. I wouldn't... I wouldn't, obviously wouldn't be watching AEW if it wasn't for WWE. True, Because if true. I didn't watch WWE all those years, I probably wouldn't be into wrestling right true. now. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there wouldn't be honestly AEW fans if there wasn't WWE fans, unless you just stumbled upon AEW by itself without watching wrestling, and you're like, "Holy shit, this reminds me of my childhood," and which a yeah. lot of people I'm sure do. Yeah. Um. But what was my point? Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's Saturday, people. It's I'm okay. Ready drinking. I know, right? Me too. I need a repo. <laughs> <laughs> um. I one. Yeah. So, I mean. Shit, what was my point? Beats me. No. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm not going to fucking remember. <laughs> Probably wasn't important. And for me sometimes, like, you, like, that's why it, there's nothing wrong with this. That just means you're good at talking. But you will literally go on and on and on before I could even maybe tell what the point of the story is. Oh, so, yeah. Because it's like, like, well, you never really said anything about. (laughs) Oh yeah, that's how I am. It's like, it's like the point is like all the way in the back of my head, and like as I'm speaking, I'm in the front of my head, and I'm slowly, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, and then it's like I, it's gone. It's It's like a little bubble. Yeah, just chasing the dragon, man. (laughs) Yeah, man. Um, all right. So, I'm looking at this list right here. Okay, I'm looking at this list, and. uh I can just, this is one of the reasons why. Okay, that was my point. Yeah. The, yes, we found it. I just naturally <laughs> stopped watching WWE. No yeah. bias against it. Yeah. I just naturally stopped watching. <clears throat> no bias against AEW. I just naturally started watching it mm-hmm. more. Naturally started decreasing my WWE viewership. Started yes. watching my W viewership. My time is valuable, Kaylin, okay? <laughs> I can't afford to watch <laughs> WWE Raw, which is like three hours. WWE SmackDown, which is another two. 205 Live which is another hour NXT, which is another hour plus all the freaking documentaries and the shit they put on the network. Like I can't watch all that. Yeah. AW boom, solid, uh, one hour a week. Yeah. They have AW dark on YouTube, but I can always just skim through that. If I, if I'm interested in yeah. watching that, it's kind of like a second show. Yeah. I think eventually AW is already it said is. they're going to do cool. a second show. We went to go see the live show. It was cool. It was yeah. Transition. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We, Cause yeah. we saw the dark matches. We saw dark. <clears throat> we saw dynamite. Yeah, so, and I think AEW even said that they were going to do a legit official second show, but I'm sure that was all put off with the uh, pandemic and everything. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at this list, and it's just so predictable. <laughs> like, I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's predictable. Yeah. I mean, or we're doing our predictions, but. Yeah. Okay, so we have the WWE Championship, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. And, of course, Bobby Lashley is with MVP. MVP is pretty good. Glad he's back in WWE. He should have been in AEW. I don't know why they didn't scoop him up, but uh, nonetheless, he's in WWE. I mean, Drew McIntyre, he just won the title at WrestleMania, so I see him winning. Uh, Universal Champion Braun Strowman versus The Miz and John Morrison for the Universal title. Uh, It's a Hmm. handicap match. I don't know what's going on there. Hmm. Um, Strowman's (laughs) going to win. That sounds confusing. Yeah, Strowman's going to win. There's no way. You got Asuka versus Nia Jax uh, for the Women's Championship. Oh. <sighs> Nia Jax needs just she's injuring people left and yeah. right. Did you see what she did to Kari Sane? I saw she, something about how people were wanting them to take like, um, what's that word? Like a yeah, um, legal action. Yeah, because she literally her. threw Kari Sane against the steps and busted her head like yeah, a gash I wide open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's uh, <laughs> she just. She's I just mean, too rough. I I don't know. The people are like, oh, you need to fire her. You need to like blah blah blah. It's like, okay, okay come on. Yeah. Just take her back to NXT okay. and have her train better on yeah. how to take care of people, you yeah. know? Um, so I don't think I see Nia Jax winning. Um, let's see, the greater re- greatest wrestling match ever is what it's called. Edge versus Randy Orton. Um, I don't know how oh, they're going to do this one, but 
so it could go actually two ways. Edge could win, but this may not be Edge's last match because I'm sure he wants his last match to be in front of a crowd, in front of a legit crowd. So he could win, but I don't think he, he may not. This is one of the ones I'm kind of iffy on because Randy yeah. Orton may win. Because, Even I'm iffy. Yeah, because <laughs> Edge won the first one at WrestleMania. So if Randy Orton wins this second one, then they'll go on to a third match. Yeah. That's usually, that's how the storytelling works. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like the rubber match is what they call yeah. it. Or, or no, no, I think the rubber match is the second match. I don't know. No. Um, too many sayings in wrestling. <laughs> So we got the women's tag team uh, championship match. We got Bailey and Sasha Banks, who just won the title. So I don't think I see them losing it. No, yeah, uh, it was versus, just like last week, right? Yeah, exactly. Versus uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus the Iconics. Uh, that's how they say their name. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, like I said, the the Iconics, uh, they kind of got screwed. They were the first. Uh, were they the first ones? To the, or was Bailey and Sasha? No, no, no. The Iconics beats Bailey and Sasha at WrestleMania. And then they were champions, and WWE just kind of did nothing with them. They just yeah. kind of just do them in the trash. Yep. Um, so <laughs> they could get it back, but yeah. the way Bailey and Sasha just won it, and the way they are backstage, that they're known for throwing a fit if they lose. Um, oh I don't God. see them. I don't see them losing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's what happened at WrestleMania. They literally were like apparently on the floor, like throwing a fit. A lot of people are saying that's true. A lot of people are saying it's false, but wow. they, you could tell. Just watch their entrance. Watch how they are in that WrestleMania match. Yeah. Because, of course, they know they're going to lose before they go out there. <laughs> and they were apparently they were told minutes before they went out that they're going to lose. So watch their entrances. You can tell that they're fucking pissed. pissed. They, like, Bailey was, like, barely smiling when she came out. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but anyway, so you got Apollo Crews versus Andrade for the U.S. Championship. Again, Apollo Crews just won it. So um, I, don't, I don't really think I see him losing Man. it. Sheamus, predictable. Yeah, exactly. Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Eh, I mean, it's kind of predictable, but then I kind of like, I'm just, I don't know. What they, do you they're, think? they're doing this thing where like Sheamus is like, they're trying to do this storyline with Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. Again, I haven't really watched, but I'm trying to catch up with it and it just, I don't really get it. I'm trying to fr- frame Jeff Hardy for like being drunk and running over uh, mm. Elias and... I don't know. He's just basically Sheamus is trying to get into Jeff Hardy's like inner demons, I guess. Huh. Uh, I'm going with Jeff Hardy for this one. Yeah. Because apparently WWE wants to push Jeff Hardy and like give him another title run to, to basically make him happy hmm. to keep him in WWE because wow. it's like they don't want to lose him. I mean, so if he, if he loses, it's going to suck because it's like, look at Matt Hardy. He's having the time of his life in AEW. Yeah. Whether you think you like him in AEW or not. Or you like what he's doing in, in AEW or not? It's like, dude, you know he's having the time of his life, or oh, yeah. he's doing whatever he wants. So now it, his his gimmick has turned into like a split personality gimmick. Like oh, it's nice. cool. Like he was he was out and he was talking to Sammy Guevara, and like midway through, he was like normal Matt Hardy. Like yeah. and then midway through, like he started like shaking his head, and then he became the other Matt Hardy. And wow. he's like, there's multiple Matt Hardys yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that he becomes. So like he's doing what he wants. He's yeah. having the time of his life over there. And then Jeff yeah, Hardy's awesome. over here against Sheamus. I know. <laughs> I mean, I like Sheamus too, but yeah. I mean, come on. Street Profits versus Viking Raiders. I don't know why they're having this match. This is like the Vi- <laughs> they they ruin the Viking Raiders. They ruin them. They're supposed to be the. They were originally in the in the Indies. They where they originally became badass. They were called um, War Machine, mm-hmm. and then they became the War Raiders. And the fans would chant "War, War, War" every time they came out. Yeah. Vince didn't like that when they came to w- when they came to the main roster Raw yeah. and WWE. So he changed them to the Viking Experience. And they were they got dragged and clowned on the internet for <laughs> about a week or two, and then they changed their name to the Viking Raiders. And these guys are too big ass again, like the revival, too big ass brutes. They, you know, that's the that's the entertainment form of them is that the way they wrestle and they slam people, and it's like it, like they're supposed to play like these yeah. old Viking brutes, yeah. and that's their that's their gimmick, that's their character. They had they had them the past couple of weeks. In a bowling competition with the Street Profits, in a mini golf competition with the Street Profits, <laughs> like completely ruining them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, WWE is supposed to have a comic relief type of segment. That's the whole point of like wrestling is it's like a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, so it's supposed to have a comic relief type of thing. Um, but this is just terrible. And yeah. I love both teams. I yeah. like the Viking Raiders and I, and the Street Profits are freaking awesome. They're they're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like I t- I send you the uh, because. Bianca Belair from NXT is with uh, Montez and 
she uh like she she sold him because mm-hmm. he wanted to buy those golf pants that was against the viking raiders oh, okay, she he wanted yeah. those buy those floral golf pants for like 80 bucks so she just sold him a pair oh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, i remember fun. that and then finally you have uh seth rollins versus alistair black or oh, uh, on the street profits and viking raiders i'm gonna go with street profits just because like i said they ruined the viking raiders yeah <laughs> um Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black. Uh, this one could be iffy. I mean, I'm, I want Aleister Black to win, but Seth Rollins is probably going to win. Yeah. Uh, just because he's the golden child. All right, we're done. <laughs> the golden I'm done talking about. See, look at that. I, I had no problem talking about AEW, but I was kind of fed up talking about. Right. AEW. You're like, we're done. <sighs> Proof is in the pudding, people. Yeah. I'm sorry to say, you know, I, I, like I said, that's how it goes. Yeah. Um, What else? I don't know. What else do you think? I don't know. We're going to do a bonus episode again. Yeah, we are. Or t- uh, probably, what, tomorrow? Because oh, the pay-per-view is tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll do a bonus episode probably uh, tomorrow. And I say bonus episode just because um, it's gonna only going to be like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, normally our episodes. Just after we, it's going to be after we watch Backlash. Yeah, yeah. And then just a quick recap. Um, like I said, this is going to be, this is going to be the pay-per-view that determines if I want to invest my time yeah. in WWE or just keep being the casual fan that I am. Because I'm always going to watch the WWE pay-per-views. Like I said, I'm, I'm always going to you yeah. know, be a WWE fan. It's just yeah. I don't mind investing my time in the pay-per-views, you know, but week to week, it's just if it's not interesting. I'm not going to watch. So, uh, all right, people, we hope we didn't bore you to death if you're not a wrestling <laughs> fan. And uh, if you are a wrestling fan, uh Email us or DM us on social media. Let us know your thoughts yeah, you uh, think? on the Backlash pay-per-view and let us know your thoughts on uh, what's going on in AEW. So mm-hmm. anything else for me, Kaylin? What, what, what are your thoughts? I feel like, I mean, again, I've talked this whole episode. I know, but it's fine, you know, because I'm not uh, always watching. You well, you'll watch Backlash with me, so you'll have something yeah, to say. Yeah. Then. All hail the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla! I've been meaning to play that sound clip for like the past like five episodes, but I keep forgetting. And I well, forgot to this episode, so that's why game. I just clicked it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for listening, guys. Thanks, um, again, guys. you can find us at the Cave in Universe on social media, YouTube, and at the Cave in Universe.com, which the website isn't even up yet, but. Yeah, send us an email. Don't forget yeah. uh, the cave in universe at gmail.com. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything you need, uh, be in the email. Any questions, comments, suggestions, yeah. um, anything you need, go and email us. All right. Peace and love, guys. And you will hear from us soon. Bye.